You are listening to a dot P one on one. Perian Flax, welcome to the show, sir. Hello. That is Casey Atchison. Welcome to the show, Casey. H- Hello. Thank you for having me. Welcome, Suns fan. Hello, friends. It's been a long time. Mott, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me once again. Uh, very excited to be here. Austin Capitalist Walsh, welcome to the show, Cap. Thank you very much, man. It's uh, good to be back. Special guest, Sir Action Slacks. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for having me. Hello, all, and welcome to Defense of the Patients, a Dota 2 podcast. I am your host, Roland, joined today by a very enigmatic individual, someone whose uh, quotes really get me. This one really got me. You don't need to do something with your day, just something, or you don't need to do something with your life, just something with your day. Captain of an all North American, not only North American, American team. Kyle Mellons Friedman. Kyle, how are you? Pretty good. Uh, no complaints. Just got back from the gym. Feeling good. You know, like after you take a shower and everything, you're just like, nice. I did something with my day. Now I'm going to sit in front of my computer for a few hours. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't really know how that feels to to go to the gym, to, to take that, you know, that, that shower and then sit down. I just pretty much just sit down. At the at the computer, it's, but it's okay. It kind of sucks to be honest, but you get used to it. Like, <laughs> it, it's like I was I was thinking in the shower, like, it life life is just stretching and showers. You know, if that makes sense. Like, <laughs> you don't actually see pro- like a shower. Like, you need to do it every day. If you don't do it, you're just gonna smell. And it doesn't matter if you showered yesterday. You still gotta do it tomorrow, or today rather. And as far as stretching goes, like, you don't actually f- see any results for like weeks or months, but you still have to submit yourself to pain and repetition every day and then slowly but surely you make progress it's great which which definitely ties in uh although i flubbed that a little bit it definitely ties into your bio which i love uh i you've had this bio for a very long time which is i'm gonna repeat it again you don't need to do something with your life just something with your day i feel like uh you're definitely holding very true to that statement um i really don't as much as i should but i try like i try so i guess that counts i mean it's it's really cool to see um i don't know you you're you're definitely enigmatic was the perfect word uh you're an individual who loves what he does i can just tell just by watching you play watching you in the booth uh and definitely uh holds yourself to a very high standard um uh, those are all those are all assertions and assumptions, but uh, I feel like I may be right there. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. All right, so we're gonna get into some basic interview questions um, here on the one-on-one. We 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 care that you're a pro. Uh, we do. We we like the fact that you you play Dota at a very high level, the top level, and you get paid to do so. But we also want to humanize you a little bit. We want to know who you are. And so I guess my first question would be, where'd you grow up, Kyle? That's a good question. Um, I don't really know, to be honest. I was born in New York, and uh, we moved around a lot as when I was young. Uh, the first like stable household was, I think, when I was about 11 in Jersey. Okay. I went to high school there, and I stayed in New Jersey until I was about seven, 18, and then moved to Florida. Moved from there to Maryland, back to Florida, back to Maryland, and now I'm in Florida and I'm probably just going to stay here. I don't really know where I'd say I'm, I'm from, uh, but like the general northeast. Yeah. And if you're European, just, just America, that's where I'm from. <laughs> it's literally the, the tip of America uh, as it stands right now, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Uh, so, so Florida's home then? I would say so, yeah. It's pretty nice here. I mean, today it was like 73 degrees, slight Ooh. breeze. I can go outside my backyard and just, like, sun myself year-round. Uh, I don't. I'm still pasty, but, you know, it's the <laughs> idea. It's the thought that counts. I've it, thought about going out in the sun. It, it is the thought. Um, so, Kyle, uh, higher education, mm-hmm. is this something that you, that you did, or, or were you into games long before ever wanting to reach a higher education? I took a semester of community college and realized there was, I just, I was just going to go play games. So I did. And now it's six years later. Good Um, for you. Coming out of high school, I had said I was going to take a gap year. So that's what I did. 
but it kind of just turned into six gap years, and now it, I think it's way too late. I don't think I would ever be able to take even one class, let alone a schedule. I just I couldn't. I couldn't sit in the room. I think I think a combination of being on the internet all the time and Reddit has ruined my attention span. I actually blocked Reddit for like a week, um, and I've still tried to view it like 140 times because it just becomes ingrained in you. Like there's this circle of social media that just sucks your time away, and it's not fulfilling at all. No. But it's just like you go, and I'm not alone in this. I don't think I've no, talked to a bunch of people who like me are on the internet all the time, and we just literally circle around like the nine to 10 websites that give you dopamine, nothing's interesting, nothing's important, but it's like just enough to keep you focused. And then it's like hard to even watch movies because you get bored. And then God forbid you sit through 30 seconds of dialogue. You know, you're now tabbing out and playing Hearthstone. It's just like, got to stop that shit. <laughs> no, the Arteezy Manta on the, on the RP. That was, you know, that was some, whoo, that was a good 25 second clip. Uh, okay, so when did you get into gaming then? So you, you did the one semester community college. What games were you playing uh, when you decided, nah, I'm going to game? What well, were you playing? When I first got out of high school, I took a gap year to just like play. Uh, that was when I was starting to get into Han. I played competitively in Left 4 Dead for a while, and that game just like never really took off. And one of my teammates was like, hey, you're good at games. I'll buy you Han if you want to come play. So I did that. Um, I played Dota as a kid way back in the day, so it was like, it was just fun, and I just got good at it over the course of the year. Um, I never really found success in Han for quite some time, and then I actually quit playing video games to start doing door-to-door -door sales. Whoa. That's a long story. That's like, that's a whole rabbit hole. I like, my mom, I took over my family's house and moved in with a, like four other dudes, and it slowly deteriorated into no one really had employment. We were working at a restaurant. It was just, it was just a poor situation. And then um, I kind of fucked off to Florida to try and play Han again. Thankfully, I, my, I, I just kind of crashed with my brother at my dad's house and we just grinded away trying to make something of ourselves and finally hit pay dirt, started winning in Han and then just kind of jumped to Dota. And now it's three years later and we're, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Successful. There's a lot of details, but it's kind of like, yeah, there. I don't know. You just kind of go with the flow, and then it's six years later. The, yeah, and, no. Uh, I know. God, I couldn't wait yeah. to be 18, and then now I'm 25. It's like, oh, my God, I can't wait to be 18. Move out. Now I'm 25? That's a bummer. Uh, okay, so let's, let's, let's dial it back to the door-to-door -door sales. This is, this is something that, that I did. Was this like a live-for-the-weekend type thing, live in, rooming with people? uh work on the work on the weekdays uh party on the weekends oh, um man we honestly didn't party nearly as much as we should we did have throw a few that got a little out of hand but we were in a townhouse so it was kind of tough there was uh, we only had the cops show up once though which i considered hey that's good a great like a good success and for some reason the only guy that was 21 was from argentina and he just pretended like he didn't speak english they eventually left it's a long story <laughs> man that house was so weird dude we had this guy this guy had like his pregnant he 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 had a pregnant girl move in with him and and then like we had another girl like i don't know dude this it was bad and then <laughs> some dude broke the tv oh and people the tv started, then, was like, it a new girls one got the idea yeah, uh, no, it wasn't, thankfully. But uh, it was one of those big, huge, boxy ones, and he just oh, put gotcha. a cue ball right through it. Oh. And then we had these girls get the bright idea to start writing on the wall, and once that happened, it was just like fucking no rules so then everyone's writing on the wall uh -huh. um i bet this russian girl i was drunk at the time i wouldn't have said okay that she couldn't break my door down and she did and then we surfed it down the stairs and then i didn't have a door for the last three months of that lease that was not fun what but happened after the lease it's, it's like, it sounds great but it's like it really just no wasn't no i'm sure it was miserable it was miserable for, for, for months for months we just worked um about 20 minutes away and I would leave my house around 9.45. Uh, I would drive me and three other people in my grandmother's 92 Subaru, which I was actually driven home from the hospital when I was born in. And uh, we would then drive to the office, hang out, do some stuff, uh, like, you know, fake motivation. It was one of those multi-level marketing, not oh. really a scam, but... You know, they sell you Scammy. far more. Scammy. They, it, the, the idea is great, but the actual getting to said idea, like no one, it does, it's not feasible. So anyway, um, we would work, go to the field, 
do some sales door to door. We were selling Verizon Fios, which is like a cable subscription. Come back. I'd leave the office around like 9, 30, 10 o'clock, get dinner, get home. So it'd be like 11 p.m. And then I'm waking up at 9 to go leave for work tomorrow at 9.30. We would also work Saturdays and then Sundays were off. So Sundays were kind of the just, you know, uh, chill, lay back. Like everyone would just get really high and just like yeah. – lounge that's and that's what i figured after week there so had to be pot somewhere it, in there it, yeah for sure yeah it's like it's insane that like i don't know man real life just sucks if you're listening to this and you're between the age of 18 and 24 i'm sorry because life sucks yeah, Our, the tough. number of jobs out there is steadily decreasing while the number of people looking for said jobs are increasing rapidly and the other problem with our generation is that we've been raised with the internet so we know what we're missing out on we see all these beautiful people (laughs) doing wonderful things with their lives traveling the world all these fucking gadgets and cars and games whatever the fuck and we see all of these things that we don't have and then it's real damn hard to just like go work as a waiter at buffalo wild wings which is what i almost did before i realized holy shit i'm retarded why am I going to quit gaming? This is after Han. I'm going to go play Dota because real life sucks. So once again, sorry. No, life sucks. no. But- yeah, it does. I, I, I completely agree with you. So my story is very similar to yours. That's all I'm going to say about my story because this is not about me whatsoever. People have listened to hundreds and hundreds of hours of me. Uh, so you get into Dota 2, you realize life sucks, and you want an escape initially? Or, or was your plan to kick ass at dota 2 i mean you're you're a competitive individual were you trying to escape or were you trying to be the best like initially like uh, you, I would sitting say, down at the keyboard i'd say a bit of both okay a bit it's, of both it's so not you, um mm-hmm. sorry go ahead no it's okay you can elaborate i'm sorry i was just i was just gonna say i mean when i first sat down and played dota 2 granted i didn't have any moba experience i was like this game sucks this is nothing like starcraft 2 uh and becoming the best at it was i mean i i wouldn't even message 4ks because they were like oh my god that guy's 4k like he'd never talk to me so it it was it's an an intimidating game i I didn't enjoy it for like the first 200 games but when it's like okay my other options are garbage so it's either this or like i don't know go be my my backup plan which is just to be a hobo with a funny sign (laughs) i figured i might as well try and enjoy dota first so i would literally wake up eat like a bagel sandwich and then play dota and um occasionally i have like a a girlfriend come over but it would be late at night and i would literally play dota until there was someone else in my house to hang out with i would ignore my roommates and just play dota until i liked it and then i liked it about a month and a half in i actually went from caliber i calibrated at like 4.4k and grinded to 6k in like 40 days it was absurd Whoa. like i just played so much dota was it because of han like, that it, you were able to do this or like how in the hell does so calibrating a four point okay i'm gonna i'm gonna cite ee for a second so this, is, this was back like three years ago so well. it was a little bit like different. two and a half i guess so ee once said and i don't know if you agree with this another captain of a team he said that if you're not 4k in a month and you're not 6k in a year you have no chance of being a pro player oh for sure it's oh, fucking you, you agree? holy shit. I play I play an average like six point seven like seven k games and everyone's still bad because okay. it's not uh, it's not about your skill. It's about your understanding of how Dota two works. You need to recognize like the openings you have to take a tower when you're unsafe, when you should be TPing, where you need to farm, stacking efficiently, item builds. Like being good at Dota has nothing to do with like how well you last hit and farming. It's it's cerebral. It's where you're moving and why. And if you can't pick this up in a year, like you're just not good. You're just not good. You're just and never going to make when it. People ask me like, how do they get better? But like, you're just bad. I'm sorry. This isn't. It's like basketball. Like you can't. You you can't just like shoot until you're good. You need to have a certain basketball IQ and just like some raw talent. I think you can definitely get better, but like you need a baseline. And if it's just like. 5k players are fucking terrible like they're awful if you can't outplay them you don't have a chance i am sorry okay this so this is super interesting because like okay here's my here's my conundrum with dota 2 is i was 2k forever and i felt like i was boxed in because anybody who is one mmr higher than you when you're 2k is a million mmr higher than you and they box you in to say no don't do this when this situation happens don't do this um, is this something you just completely ignored when you first started playing Dota? Because I'm sure you got advice 
from other people, right? I'm I played mostly mid, but not really to be honest. Like Han and Dota were are real damn similar games. I think it's part of the reason um almost every really top tier Han player that switched over to Dota had a lot of success. Like off the top of my head, Ka um Fly, No Tail, Moon Meander, S4, um I I like to include myself and Zach if I can. Absolutely. Uh, PPD uh Chessie came from Han, who else Zai like all of these really? players I did not started know. Han. Like, yeah, like they, they were at lands, you know. I think Zai was at like four or five. S four was at a few before he switched. You know, all these people, like this was this was the Han scene, you know, these were the people on top. Oh yeah, of course, um Jonas some fan, uh Hanskin and Limp as well. Like you'd be surprised, but wow. like I I can't the there are fewer players that were good at Han that didn't succeed than those who did. The, there's a very short list of people that were decent at Han and aren't good in Dota. And I'm not going to name them because that would be rude. Uh, that's fine. So it, uh, is, is it similar because Han was cerebral in the fact that you needed to know when to get back. You needed to have a reason for going somewhere. You had to, re you had, you had to have basically like a sentence reason for what you're doing. What do you mean by that? I mean, like, so Dota 2, you, you mentioned earlier that, that Dota 2 isn't just about getting last hits and, and using your, you know, whatever. You need, to, you need to think about what you're doing. It's very cerebral, like you said. You need to know mm -hmm. when to TP somewhere. You need to know when to get somewhere. It was, I didn't yeah, play Han. I, I, I don't know anything about Han. Is that why these Han players were so successful in Dota? I, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that Han was just, like, real stale uh, for a long time. And you had to learn to min-max efficiently because the game was essentially solved. Like, there weren't really any surprise picks. There were no surprise tri-lanes. The meta was real stale. It was a dual lane mid-meta for, like, two years. So the only way to get an advantage to get better was to ro either rotate better, have, like, good vision, um, or, or really just, like, you out-efficient your enemies like you stacked better your rotations were better most teams were running junglers and when you're running a jungler your lanes are a lot more fluid you can pretty much dual lane in any lane you want the other two are solos so it was a lot more of a thinking man's game where it's just like okay he they did this so i'm gonna do this now it, it, but as i said it was more solved like no one's really out playing or out strategizing anyone else they everyone knows what you're gonna do it's just who executes better and because of that i think there was a lot of uh there was just a lot more study and a lot more min maxing and that just attitude when you brought it to Dota where there's so many more variables, so many more relevant heroes and items, etc., that it's just different. It's just not, it, it's the same game, but more complicated, but the same attitude will allow you to succeed. So you come over to Han and you have all this, uh, this uh, experience in uh, executing. You, you know how to execute because Han was so stale that the best way to be good at Han was to just, be really good at executing so you get into dota you calibrate at 4.4k for over these 40 days from getting from 4.4k to 6k how did you find yourself doing it like what what were you doing what roles were you playing what what heroes were you playing what and did you realize at this point that i'm going to make it to a top tier team uh, I didn't really, it was more of a, I'm a Dota player now, so I'm going to be a Dota player. I don't, there wasn't really, uh, I also had Beef, uh, who's been a friend since like way back when, who was the GM of Complexity. So about like a month, pretty much like a month after I started, he, they gave us a shot to just build a team under the Complexity brand. And since then, that's what we've been doing. So I never really had the growing pains of, shit, like, what am I doing with my life? How do I find a team? Because I always had a team. Like, it was, there was me, there was Zach, there was complexity. And, you know, we just had to try and make it work. And we For just sure. tried out players and kept practicing until we, until we could. So and we're still doing that now. I guess to get, to get to the root of my question, because I realized I gave you, like, a loaded potato of a question right there. Uh, this 4.4 to 6K climb that you did in 40 days, like, that is incredible. Like, that's indicative of a player who's going to go places which you did uh was this where was, was there a certain role were you playing everything like what like what what happened like how did how do you how did you do it like i i mean obviously you have a proclivity toward dota 2 i just would love to like know what was going on in your mind as you're just ticking up 25 at a time 
It's just, uh, there isn't, isn't much to say. I just played more games. The Dota matchmaking doesn't mean anything. Like, any good player is going to win at least ha more than half of their games. So, theoretically, the guy who plays the most will get the most MMR. Like, I just played a lot and tried to win all the time. There, there's nothing else to it. There's no, there's no secret. It was just, literally, I am not exaggerating, and I never <laughs> want to do this again. But I was playing Dota 2, a minimum, I would say, of 12 games a day. Wow. A minimum. And and all with with your brother, or were you guys splitting uh, no, this up? No, I was mostly solo queue. Mostly solo. Was was he sitting side by side solo queue and with you, or yeah, yeah? No, no, I was oh. in alone in my room. He was in his room. We were just gaming. Like jo uh, my cousin Josh is laughing because he's very aware. I'm telling the truth because I remember he would. I think people would come over. I would be in my room playing Dota. His <laughs> older brother, yeah, his older brother would come into my room and be like, "Hello." <laughs> Can we do something? Like, what's going on? And I would just be playing Dota. <laughs> okay, so at what point there was did... There like, a solid two months of that. So, I, so we had Beef on previously, and Beef, I, uh, he had mentioned on a show, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, because I can't remember exactly what he said, but he was saying something along the lines like, uh, I, I know you'll be good at this game, uh, uh, and I want you to, you fo to form a team, which you mentioned uh, earlier. Um, once, you, once you got your brother, Zach, and you together... Was it pretty easy on finding the other three? And did you guys know you were going to go no, far? No, it wasn't. Uh, no and yes. I mean, I still don't consider what we've done as going far at all in truth. And I hope that eventually we'll... Like, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, we haven't done well in my eyes, but obviously it could be much worse. You know, we've lived and we yeah. haven't lost money. So that was nice. We didn't have to quit. We can still keep trying. Yeah. But... um. There was a long period, specifically before TI5, where we literally had no one. It was me, Zach, and then we had Ziz. And we just tried out different players every day. I think we tried out about 40 before TI5 until we finally ended up settling with um, Tal, who had been bugging to join for like four months. And then Moon Meander was like our last ditch effort, like two days before rosters locked for TI5. And then we won the qualifier and that's it pretty much you know life goes on yeah and i was there at that and ti5 and i could feel the hype i mean you guys were relatively new there were there were specific players at ti5 that had played more hours than your entire team um it, it was it was pretty incredible to see that ti5 run but definitely um okay so let's let's get into a little bit more um about you and your brother's relationship this is something that i'm i'm definitely curious about um for first and foremost do you guys get along? Like that, that that's an so. honest question. Yeah. I mean, we could probably do without each other sometimes, but <laughs> that's kind of a product of living together, working together. And then, Oh, Hey, family vacation. We're both flying to the same house to see the family. <laughs> so there's very little separation. Okay. And also when you're in the booth, uh, intense moment and you make a call, uh, is there any tension between you and your brother as in what if what if he disagrees with your call? Is there ever a I'm, moment where if he... If it's like really stupid, then yeah, he'd probably say, nah, that's a terrible idea. But for the most part, like you can't have that. It doesn't matter if it's a bad idea. Like there's no room to discuss the uh, whether or not this is a good idea. Like you're playing the game. You can't just like have a sidebar and discuss the merits of two plans it's kind of just like hey do this no 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 let's do this okay go like there, there's no it's really not as complicated as you might think it's just let's go for sure uh i, I can only imagine i mean i have a brother we played dota together but it, it was much different what about what about the the fights like on a, on a losing game how is that handled um i mean especially i mean you guys when i lose a pub I, i'm mad I mean, you guys are, uh, in some cases, winning games and super excited, but in some cases, losing games. Uh, what is the atmosphere like immediately after losing uh, a qualifier match or something along those lines? Um, I mean, we're not pleased. It kind of course. depends on the game, honestly. Some games you lose and you played poorly, and there's really not much to do about it. Some games you weren't prepared. Some games someone sucked, like... It's hard to say. Is there finger? Is is it a lot of finger pointing, or is it more a uh, uh, chance to build the team? I guess would be. I think an addendum to the question. If everyone's in a good, like if everyone's in a standard mood, then I think at the end of the day, like there's no point in shitting on a teammate. The goal is to just get better as a team. So, 
it, you just examine the game and you talk about what could have been better because a lot of times one person's mistake is part of the teams as well because maybe maybe yeah we're out of position here but why in the fuck are we there in the first place type of thing so for sure i, I think any healthy team you should have no problem <laughs> giving and receiving cri criticism absolutely okay so uh next i'd i'd love to talk about a boot camp uh and what a boot camp entails this is something that honestly we've never really had the insight on dot p on what a boot camp entails uh how hard you guys are training um, I know you've had coaches in the past, a good friend of, of Defense of the Patients and the Haas, um, and so on. What was that boot camp like? Not even that boot camp, but a boot camp in general like? Well, I mean, we don't really boot camp as much as, like, just live in a team house. So, like, we've been in the same house for almost two years now. Um, so it's just, I don't know, it's like kind of like you're living with your team and you just talk about Dota all the time. It's not as dramatic as one might imagine. It's just you're all together. So over dinner, if you want to talk about drafts, you can. It, um, it, yeah, it always sounds super dramatic. It's like, like we're going to Turkey, and we're like closed doors, steel doors shut, and we're going to boot camp is always how it feels. So you guys take a much – do you feel like you take a more lax approach to boot camping or just you already live with each other, so why boot camp? Or why go somewhere else to I mean, boot camp? I mean, what's the difference, I guess? What's the difference between a boot camp and what we have? Like, I don't know. A, a I boot imagine, camp is just five guys, same location. I imagine, like, a jail somewhere where, like, you're locked in, you can't leave, you know? Your manager's like, no, you got to play three more. I, I, honestly, <laughs> I, I don't know. It just always sounds like such, like, a secretive thing, boot camping. Um, so, when no, you... It's, it's really just, in, in my eyes, it's just when you get together and just play. It's not... um. It, you don't need to lock the door or anything. You just you just got to play some dotes and try hard to win. <laughs> and you're in the same place. And you're in the same uh, place. Camp. In the same place. So, uh, one-off question real quick. Do you guys uh, have uh, the headphones on when you're playing or headphones off when you're playing uh, all together in the same uh, room? We, have a, we actually have an in-house mixer, uh, five individual mixers and a room mixer. So, it's actually the exact same setup if you ever watch TI we have that exact equipment. So we play with headsets on, but there's absolutely no delay because it's all mixed in-house. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's it's not a big surprise to sit down uh, at a big event, and it, it just feels like home. Well, exactly. That's kind of the point, yeah. It's just like every major, every TI, like our setup is the same one we're using on stage. So it's like the same headsets, you know what I mean? It's about as, It's literally as close as you can get to what you're looking for. <laughs> Well, it's a well-run, well-run organization. I'll say that much. You guys, you guys think about a lot of things. Yes. Um, what about this? Indeed. What about complexity this? and Chef Josh are great at their jobs. The Dota team could be a little bit better, but we're working on it. And and I I totally believe you guys are working on it. And I've only seen improvement is all I have to say. And I am a a big fan. Um, okay, so I want to Appreciate get into a little bit of this. This Florida communication seminar that you guys did sometime back. What did what was that about? What do you mean Florida communication seminar? What are you talking about? Uh, do I have false information here? D didn't you guys meet with you somebody mean, in Florida for like yeah, a communication okay, exercise? No, we had yeah, yeah, that was uh Jay. Okay, you make it sound like all all crazy and organized. We just had this uh, really great guy named James Leith. He works at IMG as a coach. Um, like a mix of a life coach and an athlete in one. So he just came over and just talked through, listened in on comms, described like how we might want to change certain aspects of our routine and our lifestyle that would make us just better at Dota and better people. And it was quite informative in my eyes and, you know, it helped us. Um, like that, yeah, that's pretty much, that was pretty much it. You get a dope guy who's like literally a coach for a living. I mean, he's going to coach the shit out of you while he has you in front of him. Did you guys do like one-on-one -on -one sessions with him? Like, did he sit down with you specifically and tell you, hey, Kyle, I think that this might work, or hey, Zach, I think that this would be a better way of doing things, or, or was it more like addressing the entire team? Um, it was a team thing. We didn't have enough time. He was only there for like four, three, four hours. Like, there wasn't enough time to just kind of have like one-on-one -on -one confession sessions. For it sure. It would have been a little, uh, it's a little like, much. It's like, Kyle, your hype is too much. You must bring it down three notches. It's at 11 currently. Um, okay, so let's move on to some uh, questions revolving around complexities and your 
career within Dota 2. Uh, first and foremost, this was a, a Dot P favorite question that they wanted to ask you, which is, what have been some of your most frustrating challenges in your Dota 2 career? Hmm... That's a good question. Um, I'd say the most annoying one has just been like finding a team for the most part, finding a group of five guys that really buy in and want to win. Um, we've always had like close, but just not, we just never had the right mix. And I think that the group of guys we have now is pretty good. We just need some more time and hopefully we'll just get better until we're good. But um, yeah. What else, honestly? It's, it's staying motivated can be really difficult at times as well. There's a lot of... It's hard to feel like you're moving forward in life when you spent the whole day playing Dota. That's part of the reason <laughs> I'm trying to like go to the gym, be more healthy, because it, it doesn't feel good to play pubs and like lose them. You feel like you're failing, but at the same time, like you just had a guy that didn't speak English and ran down mid. And it's like, <laughs> what did I do wrong here? And It's not making me better, but what do I do? And... um. I mean, it's still something I struggle with even now. It's just like, how do you maintain motivation and what do you do when you don't have anything to do? It's just like the the suffer of any person, I think, that's in a position or career where they have to self-motivate. We don't have a boss. Like, there's no one to say, hey, like watching me saying, hey, Kyle, play more Dota. Like, how much Dota is enough? How many replays are enough? How do you really get better at something that's not tangible yeah i'm not getting graded it's just play how do you quantify Learn. it it's do really better. hard to quantify especially with dendy saying that mmr is just a number you said uh, previously in this interview that mmr is just a number doesn't really matter and it's true i mean yeah yeah but that does lead me to another question that i have which is you know complexity has had a number of mids uh since forming and now you have a 9k mid player uh, maybe not still 9K, but is 9K or has reached 9K. Do you think that a team needs to have like that diamond in the rough, like Sumail or Anna or Miracle or SCCC to be a top comp- t- contender, or does that not even matter? Um, hmm. I think you need to have a talented player, but what's most important for the success of a Dota team is just five people that can and will like try to get better. And, uh, like, that know how to do their job. It's more important that you're smarter, that your Dota IQ is higher, than to be moderately more skilled. It's about understanding why you need to do what you're doing. Especially if you watch a team like OG, a part of the reason they're so good so consistently is because they don't make many unforced errors. I don't think that anyone would look at even the current roster, even the previous one, and say, okay, this player, that, like, these players are all the best at what they do. And I think they're all very good. I'm not saying they're not it's just that they succeed because their philosophy is is strong and they don't make dumb mistakes they don't go the wrong items they aren't feeding away they're not taking poor engagements like they try and maximize their chance of winning throughout the game as a unit and i think that's part of the reason they've won three majors and that's that's what i wish more commentators in the community would be more focused on because the game is not about this one person getting outplayed over here in the corner there's there's so much more going on in the game. Why is he there? Why is he doing that? And I think that if we were asking more of the right questions, uh, Dota 2 might make a lot more sense to the layman uh, watching. For sure. Uh, well, on that, uh, and going back on this interview, uh, a lot of the casters are people who, they're skilled at Dota 2, but uh, a good majority of them aren't pro players. Some of them are. Some of them have been, at least. And some of them have returned to the pro scene, Sindarin. Uh, can you blame them uh, for not being able to see Dota through the lens of of Kyle's eyes? It's not really their fault, I think. I, I, I personally think the Dota community is one of the most ungrateful and just spoiled communities in esports. And in reality, like, every esports community is pretty terrible, but there's such a a fucking cognitive dissonance between the people that just watch and the people that are trying to do. Mm-hmm. And And I really... I just really don't respect people that don't put any effort in. And there's, there's nothing. It's just all complaining constantly in this community. And I feel like it really hurts us because instead of focusing on like good plays, we just shit on people for making mistakes without really like someone does a weird item build and that team loses. Okay. The build's bad. Like it doesn't take any 
intelligence. Like if you think through things and really try and get into any pro's head, their decisions will usually make sense. It yeah. just takes work. It's easier to just like spam memes because someone died. Yeah. And it's just like, I, I don't know. There, there, there's so much room in this game for actual discussion and dissection of what's happening. Like there's so much happening in a game of Dota and it's just, there's just, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. There's just so much happening, and we miss a lot of it because no one knows where to look. Would or you, it really just doesn't care about looking. Would you say that the hive mind of, say, Reddit and Twitch chat has a big part in this? Uh, I mean, we were talking earlier in the interview about how even though you blocked Reddit, you like instinctively went to our Dota 2 multiple times, even though it was blocked. Do you feel like that Reddit may be more of a hindrance to our community than a help? Um, possibly. I think there should be... I mean, I don't know, to be honest. That's really just a problem with Reddit in general. Like, uh, if you if you stay on the website, not even related to gaming, for more than a few hours, like, you'll feel yourself becoming unhappy and angsty. Because, like, why else? Like, who think about who posts all day on Reddit and what they're doing with their lives. I'm sure a lot of them have a job, but, like, I, I, I don't know. Just do something with your life. Do anything other then then try and come up with a witty comment and put it on reddit it doesn't mean anything karma is the new like in han we had these things they were gold coins and they weren't worth anything you could buy in-game items it's the same with karma you can't do anything with it go do something else and be productive i don't even know happier and you won't feel the need to express yourself as much i have no idea what karma or uh reddit gold does to be honest with you and i i go there and do anything uh, yeah, I have no idea. I, I see people excited about getting rid of gold or karma or whatever. I don't really understand it. Uh, God, okay. it, like, it makes me sick just like, talking about Reddit. Like, me who too. cares? That's I know. the thing. Who exactly. cares? But we Let's do. Play. That's the thing. We do because we're constantly going there, which is the, which is the conundrum that, that is Reddit. Is uh, that, like, I plan on keeping it blocked, personally. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's made a big difference in my life because I will get bored and need to do something. And I'm doing more things that I just never got around to doing before. Yeah. As an example, go to the gym. Exactly. If you can just sit on your ass and juggle Netflix, a game of Hearthstone, Reddit, Twitch TV, etc., like you're never going to get bored, but you're also never going to do anything. Does it, do you know what I mean? Like oh, you're, I know exactly it's like the difference it's the difference between you know, you're hungry, so you go out, you fucking, and let, you know, pretend you're a caveman. You go out and you hunt and you you harvest your crops <laughs> and you kill a deer and you eat it. Or let's say you also have futuristic technology and you could just sit in your cave hooked up to some machine pumping nutrients into your stomach. That's the difference between the internet and real life, <laughs> where you'll get the same sort of satisfaction. You'll be able to fill up your time. You won't be bored, but you're also not doing anything. It's not wholesome. It's not fulfilling. You're just literally squandering time. Like, I want to learn Spanish, but you know what? Learning Spanish is boring. It's not fun, okay? It's not fun at all, but... You have to do it because that's like, you know what will be fun? Knowing Spanish. <laughs> it's just work. So but it's why like, would I do work when I can be entertained 24-7, 365? So but you're basically getting into the, the deserved attitude, which is an attitude I personally hate as well, where I don't want to do it, but I deserve it, is, is basically what you're, what you're getting into. Uh, also... Um, on that front, which, by the way, you're, you're a very quotable <laughs> individual with the, uh, the caveman hunting thing. Uh, there, there have been many people. Uh, Caitlin McGee, she, is, uh, she does, like, ergonomics. I for know, Yeah, she, she's super mm-hmm. awesome. Uh, she was one of our first interviews. Um, regardless, uh, she, uh, uh, what I'm getting at is exercise and Dota 2. Do you feel like if you go to the gym and say, I don't know, you run two miles or you, I mean, you do some cardio or you lift or whatever the fuck you do at a gym. Do you feel like when you get back down and you sit down and play Dota, you are playing better? Um, I would say so, but I think that's a lot just because Dota is so much about your attitude and even just your tone. If you say something, the exact same words, but you sound like a dick, they'll probably ignore you and then you'll be upset. Yeah. Whereas if you say it slightly kinder, maybe they listen and then you win the game. And I think Dota is just such 
I, I think, I, again, that's part of the reason I feel like the community is, is just sour and salty all the time because, in truth, Dota isn't fun a lot of the time. Like, Dota is kind of toxic. It's very difficult to get good games at any rating. I have friends that are 4K, 5K. I'm 7K. Like, I've, I've played in every region, and games are never 100% fun. You'd be lucky, I'd say, if one out of every two games is fun. In truth, one out of every three. You, you, you're lucky if you get one out of three games that are fun. Um, I'd say a usual would just be free win, free loss, free loss. Someone on your team picks a terrible hero in jungles, good game, and then, you know, rinse, repeat. Like, it's, it, it doesn't surprise me. Like, I'm in a shitty mood if I lose four games of Dota. Like, I, had, I stopped streaming today because I lost a game and realized that if I played the next game, I was going to be toxic because I was already in a bad mood and I would be treating these new players on my team like they were the old ones from my last game that didn't want to communicate or play Dota and just wanted to farm jungle with Iron Talents. Okay, so then do you feel like uh, going to the gym after you're in that ragey type mood is a good way to, to go about things? Like, I just lost four games of Dota. Maybe going to the gym is a good way to get rid of all that angst. Um, I think it's good. And at the end of the day, like, uh, there's another thing, and this goes back to, you know, I'm professional, so I get to say, like, playing Dota accomplished something for the day. But most people, like, if you're not trying to go pro, or even if you are and you just haven't made it yet, like, there's no, you don't feel like you made progress, especially if you went down in MMR, you know? Like, what did you really do today? You played a lot of Dota, but you feel like you went backwards. And playing uh going to the gym is a really easy way to achieve something you know really tangible and i think that that would probably help a lot of people i, I mean it helps me so for sure for sure um, okay it, it just it's like a real thing like you really made yourself better in a real way yeah physically you, you physically better stress it, yeah yeah and it releases you get the same dopamine and endorphins that like reading reddit would give you but they're real you know what i mean you earned them you didn't just hook yourself up to an IV and get a little uh, and like a like a like a fix for yourself for sure okay so let's it's like it's <laughs> oh keep going keep I have going. another analogy uh, I, really I love bad. analogies not... I love analogies please well it's it's like the difference between let's say you're a heroin addict right going okay. to the gym is that good shit right like straight <laughs> main line boom you're fucking rocking whereas reddit and just another game of dota and the fucking just going around in a circle that's that's um what's it called awesome. not fentanyl fucking methadone Meth methadone, methadone okay. that shit sucks okay it's not real <laughs> it's, it's it's like it's like tylenol you know it'll it'll satisfy you but you're still itching for something you know that that good shit okay so back to the whole ee thing where 4k in a month 6k in a year say somebody does that what would be uh some advice from uh successful captain on getting noticed by people like you to be picked up on a team just don't give up try not to be a dick go up an mmr and honestly message people like post on twitter hey i'm looking for team you'd be surprised like how few people like demonstrate they give a shit i interview almost i've interviewed everyone i've ever picked up on skype and there's some people that like say well, why can't we just type it's like, okay, well, you're not on my fucking Dota team. Like, you, you, can't, a, okay. you don't want to have a conversation with a person that you might link careers with? Like, get the fuck out of here. You know, this is, this is some real shit. You want to be a Dota player? Make it known you want to be a Dota player and try. When someone says, hey, you trying to go pro? Like, fucking pitch yourself. Like, try. You yeah. can't just, like, sit back on your ass and just wait for the perfect opportunity. It, does, it just doesn't work like that. It doesn't. Do you give a, do, how much of a shit do you give about MMR? Say this person's network, they talk to you, you feel you have good conversations with them, they're, they're good at communicating. How much of a shit do you give about MMR? Uh, it really doesn't matter at all, honestly. Okay, that, that's, that, that's exactly what I was looking for. Okay, so let's move on to some more complexity questions. Uh, current challenges moving forward as captain of complexity. Uh, winning. Winning. Okay. Uh, what is... Stop, yeah, we, we've lost like four LAN qualifier finals. It'd be nice to just go to the LANs to see if we're actually good or not instead of just losing and not going. Uh, I, mean, I mean, some of... So you've watched these replays and I'm not going to get into the Onyx replays, but the, the other replays. When you watch replays against... Um, hypothetically speaking, you go up against OG or something like that. Are you able to very easily identify what you did wrong? 
Uh, for the most part, yeah. They're back a couple of years ago. I was I would be just be lost sometimes. I'd be like, well, we lost, and I don't know how or why. But mm. now that I've just played so much, most of the time, if we lose a game, it's something I've seen before or seen something really close to be um, why we lost. So it's just like, guys, we did this, we did this, we didn't rotate here, our draft is poor, etc. And then it's just like, all right, move on, like, don't do that again. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question, but that's all I, I got. I, I feel like it answers the question perfectly. Uh, what about <laughs> this one? Have you ever felt like just quitting? Like, not in the moment, like, serious, yeah. not, not in the moment, but, like, seriously, like, you've given it a couple days, and you're like, you know what? I'm just going to go for traditional fucking job. I'm going to go back to knocking on doors. Fuck this. Um, I've considered it, like anyone would. Like, you know, you always... Sometimes it just sucks, and you're like, fuck, do I really want to do this? But at the end of the day, like I said, there's just... There's no real better opportunity, and while the pubs aren't fun, the scrims aren't necessarily that much fun, even the tournaments might not be that much fun, it's all worth it when you walk up on stage and you get to perform doing what you're best at in front of like thousands of people that scream when you win. Yeah. And um, that feeling is like unexplainable and something that if you talk to any performance artist, whether they, they're comedians, whether they're talk show hosts, anchors, gamers whatever the fuck there's really nothing that feels like going up on stage in front of people yelling it's just like i'm it's, sure it's you'd have to you have to do it to understand what so what does it do to you does it make you want to win more does it does it bring anxiety what like what does that feeling do for your dota play like people Sorry, screaming. Again? Uh, what does that do for your Dota play? Mm -hmm. Like people screaming. You're walking up. Here comes complexity. Oh. You're about to get into the booth. Oh my God! People are wild. You guys are sp supposed to win this match, uh, this hypothetical match. What is this doing for you uh, as a Dota player when you sit down and that horn goes off and you're about to play? I'm. Uh, it's it's just an adrenaline rush. Honestly, it it's just I don't like I said. It's hard to say like how it feels. It's just you just feel ready. Like you're good to go. You feel like you've got, like, heat running through your veins, and you're just excited to just go and just... This is what you do with your life, you know? It's just nice to finally, like... That's when everyone's... And you get to show people, like, hey, I don't suck. This is what I do with my life. And and that is an amazing Let's thing. Let's go. So that, that reminded me of a question that isn't on my little question sheet. When you decided, hey, family, whether that be mom, dad... Uh, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, I'm going to play video games, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, especially after uh, dropping out of college after one semester. What was the response like? I mean, luckily I've got a couple parents that uh, like know like what technology is, and also just... They, they they have a similar philosophy to the one I have, which is it's not about like making money. It's not about having a retirement plan as much as it is making sure you enjoy your day-to-day -day life and you're doing what makes you happy. Um, I think that as long as I ended up with a career that I enjoyed, like we're doing work that I enjoyed, I think my dad would, would consider that success, regardless of whether I made $10,000 a year and lived in, on a boat or made a million. I mean... Money, you can't take any of it with you. It's all just about what you experience on a day-to-day -day basis and the relationships you build and the people you see, the places, and mm -hmm. I don't know. what. It depends on what people want, but I kind of just go back to the same quote I've had like, kind of inscribed on my brain for the past 10 years, which is you don't need to do anything with your life. Just do something with your day. Indeed. And if you, do, if you can make an honest effort to do that, then I think you'd be really surprised where you end up in a couple of months. Okay, so uh, last couple of questions for you, Kyle. Um, which, by the way, I had a drink with your dad, and God damn it, he's a good guy. I'll tell you that much. Just on fa on, on face value, he's a, he's a good guy. Uh, uh, at Ti, at Ti, I was like, I, I, was, I was like, are you proud of your son? And he's like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, <laughs> like, I, I literally asked him this because I have no shame, and, and I was just curious, you know. Uh, no, he he adores the shit out of you and Zach, and it was it was really cool to hear what a gaming dad like my dad thinks i do he has no idea what i do uh and and is probably ashamed of me but i don't really care so it's it's cool to see 
that you know i especially with moo as well uh mama moo and everybody like how much they support you guys and and that has to go into like the back of your mind when you're playing a game like i'm gonna make my parents proud uh you know which is a cool thing to say along video games like it's it's just weird uh okay so uh moo uh incredible incredible play at ti6 uh with his uh timber saw uh in and his offlane play in general people thought uh, the whole crowd was yelling boo no they were yelling moo uh and then all of a sudden he gets switched over as a carry do you have anything to to say on that front not really it just kind of happened like there wasn't really it just it's, you kind of just did what you had to do like we had justin leave the team and monkeys was like our best option so you're like all right move just plays carry we'll just start picking two offlaners no problem and um, <laughs> I don't know. It just it just happens. Like I I couldn't come up with any carry. I think that I like the Dota team I have. I think that um, we we underperformed and just I don't really want to talk about the most recent tournament. But like we're we're good and we're gonna keep trying to get better. And if we lose for the next four months, maybe we change something up. But I don't really think that'll happen. So well, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it Don't until break. it's like real broken for sure scrappy do is the biggest example of that i mean what the fuck scooby-doo was great and then they added scrappy do don't fix it if it ain't broken uh okay so the current iteration of complexity um which is of course moo 747 monkeys forever z freak and yourself uh do you feel like this is the team to win ti uh if i didn't think that we had a shot i wouldn't be playing with them so I hope so. What, I think so. Okay, so wait and see. What are you doing to prepare? Like, I, 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 like, I know you're playing Dota. I don't want like just like the face value playing Dota. Like, do you do you guys play a game, watch a game? Do you play five games, watch all five games? Like, what is the process of getting better as a team? Like, I, if you can like give a, a short answer on that, I guess I asked like a bombshell of a question, but like how how do you plan on on taking ti uh, i know that's hard play dotes play watch dotes. replays try and stay healthy hydrated okay don't uh, suck and last bit i guess would would be the og thing uh you say og makes makes very few mistakes uh they're they're good no individual player is maybe like the best in the world but they're a great team and, and and that and that's uh you know how they win repeated majors is there by watching their replays is there anything that you're picking up on that you're like okay i see how they're doing this and i feel like maybe not mimic but you know pick up something of what they're putting down uh they have a pretty different style but i think uh like the unforced errors concept is something that I really stressed by watching their replays where they don't they don't seem like they're crushing games a lot of the time they just play solid and then they end up winning and that's like one of the things I think a lot of people could bring or gain from that team because uh, there's a saying to be good try to focus on not making mistakes and to be great try and make plays but to be honest outside of maybe the best two or three teams in Dota, no one else is great, and they'd be better served by just trying to play more solid and crisp and disciplined versus like, oh, hey, guys, we're going to make this crazy smoke play, ping, ping, here's the line, and then, wow, we got him. Like, it just doesn't work like that a lot of the time because there's just a dude standing on the high ground, and then you're like, shit, what do we do now? <laughs> well, Kyle, it truly was a pleasure having you on Defense of the Patients. Um, uh super super fanboy here i will say that i root for you guys every time you play <laughs> um especially after seeing you guys at ti5 and all the hype around that and then seeing you guys um also at ti6 um i up in the lounge and just and your dad up there it was it's honestly it was just it was kind of like uh you know god damn like i i know they've had struggles but they're gonna be okay you know what i mean like they're they're gonna be okay uh, was basically 
how I felt. And, and it was cool to see you walk around. You you walk around with confidence, but you're you're a humble person, uh, which is which is a weird uh, a weird mixture because usually you see somebody walking around with confidence, you think arrogant bastard. No, very humble. You were very willing to talk to me. Uh, I had a long conversation with you, but I don't expect you to remember. Uh, there, I was quite a few beers in. I imagine we all were, but you're, you're a very approachable individual, and thank you for that because that's what the scene needs: is people that a fan can go up to and say, "Hey, I, I appreciate your play," and and you you spent five minutes with me talking with me, and so uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, if you want to find more uh, of Defense of the Patients, of course, Defense of the Patients dot com, uh, Defense of the Patients at Gmail dot com, def- uh, Patreon dot com forward slash Defense the Patients, uh, Twitch dot TV forward slash dot PTV. Uh, where we already kind of know where we can find you, but do you want to give some direct links, some direct shout outs, anything like that, Kyle? No, not really. Um, I'd say to address what you were just closed with, like, I, I really just, I'm just a dude named Kyle that just happens to be like good at Dota. That's if what you I said. Were, that is literally what you said yeah. when I met you. You're like, I'm just a dude. Yeah, I've said it. I've said it for the last like three years, man, like <laughs> five years even. It's like if I were the best welder in North Dakota, no one would give a fuck. But because I happen to play Dota 2, people care. Like it's the same with anyone who's famous, honestly. We're all just people that like to do something and got good enough for people to care about it. But please, for the love of God, we're still human. We're no, nothing is like... Like you're just you're just a human. Like who cares? Just like you just say hi. Like you can literally just say hey, what's up, Kyle? And it's you know, as long as you don't start autistic screeching or fucking anything like super weird, chances are we'll be able to have a goddamn conversation about something. You know. And uh, but anyway, not a lot of people share that attitude. Shout out, shout out to Chef Josh and shout out to Complexity Gaming for keeping me sane, healthy, and uh, not hungry. For a long time, and hopefully soon, the Dota team will help everybody else eat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do know what you're saying. Time. Uh, I will definitely have my complexity badge on when I when I walk into TI7 this year. Um, so, without any further ado, this was Roland for Kyle Mellons Friedman saying good luck and Godspeed. <laughs> <laughs>